Hello guys, this is Ryan from History Facts. In today's video we are talking about the secret intimate lives of Ming concubines. Enjoy the video. Nothing quite spells mystery like a glimpse into China's forbidden palaces, centuries ago. Stepping back in time over 600 years ago, to the Ming Dynasty, one wonders about the women who dwelt in the palaces of Beijing and Nanjing. Unlike the daring women of the Tang Dynasty, 618 to 907 AD, who lived in Chang'an Palace opulence and shied not from revealing skin or cleavage, Ming court women were more demure. During the early Ming Dynasty the Dragon Throne, seat of the Emperor, lay in the palace in Nanjing, a cosmopolitan city then known as Yingtian. Emperor Hongwu, the first Ming Emperor had just driven out the Mongols from the Middle Kingdom. Like many Chinese emperors before him, and much like the former Mongol rulers who had ruled China from Dadu, modern-day Beijing, Emperor Hongwu owned a royal chamber or harem where lived, or so he hoped anyway, the most gorgeous creatures in the country and beyond. Ming Brothels Prostitution was a widespread industry in the Ming Dynasty, with brothels found in both urban and rural areas. Women who worked in brothels were often from poor families, and many were forced into the industry due to economic hardship. The government regulated the industry by licensing brothels and collecting taxes from brothel owners. Some brothels were known for their luxurious decorations, music, and food, and were patronized by the wealthy and powerful. However, prostitution was also stigmatized, and prostitutes were often marginalized and subject to discrimination. Some religious and moralistic groups saw prostitution as a threat to social order and morality, and campaigned for its abolition. Ming Concubines Concubinage was also common, with wealthy men often having multiple concubines in addition to their wives. Concubines were typically women from lower social classes who were taken as mistresses by wealthy men. Some concubines were treated well and enjoyed privileges, such as a higher status than other women, access to education, and sometimes the ability to inherit property. However, others were subjected to abuse and mistreatment, and had limited freedom and rights. Concubinage was often used as a way for men to demonstrate their social status and wealth, and to secure political alliances. Sex Relationships Homosexuality was not illegal in the Ming Dynasty, and there are records of same-sex relationships among both men and women. Some scholars have suggested that homosexuality was more accepted in the Ming Dynasty than it was in later periods of Chinese history. However, there were still social stigmas attached to same-sex relationships, and they were not openly discussed or celebrated. Some of the written records that mention homosexuality were actually criticisms or condemnations of such behavior. Additionally, same-sex relationships were often associated with marginalized groups, such as eunuchs or male actors, and were not considered acceptable for mainstream society. Sex Education Sexual education was provided to some individuals, with texts on sexual health and techniques being circulated among the literate classes. These texts covered topics such as contraception, pregnancy, and sexual techniques, and were often written by medical professionals or sexologists. They provided practical advice and remedies for various sexual issues, and were sometimes illustrated with diagrams or drawings. However, sexual education was not widespread, and many people may not have had access to these texts. Some of the texts were also written in a highly technical or esoteric style that was difficult for the average person to understand. Premarital Affairs However, there were also strict social norms and expectations around sexuality, with premarital sex and adultery being frowned upon and punished. Women who engaged in premarital sex were often subject to harsher punishment than men, and adultery was considered a serious offense that could lead to divorce or even execution. The emphasis on chastity and sexual morality was linked to Confucian ideals of family and social order, which stressed the importance of duty and loyalty. Women were expected to be virtuous and chaste, and were often subject to more stringent standards of behavior than men. This was reflected in various cultural practices, such as the requirement for women to have bound feet or to wear restrictive clothing, which were seen as marks of refinement and virtue. Practice of foot binding 
The practice of foot binding among women, which was popular during the Ming dynasty, was sometimes linked to eroticism and sexual fetishization. The small size of a bound foot was considered sexually attractive by some men, and there were even stories of men who would pay to see a woman's bound feet. However, it is important to note that foot binding was also linked to cultural ideals of femininity and beauty, and was not solely a sexual fetish. The practice was seen as a way for women to display their elegance and refinement, and was often associated with beauty. Erotic Art The Ming Dynasty also saw the rise of erotic art, including paintings and sculptures depicting sexual acts and fantasies. Some of these works were commissioned by wealthy individuals for their private collections, while others were produced for sale to a wider audience. Erotic art was sometimes viewed as a form of entertainment, and was associated with pleasure and sensuality. However, it was also subject to censorship and moral scrutiny, and some works were destroyed or banned by the government. Crossdressers or transgender individuals the Ming dynasty also had a complex system of gender and sexual identity, with various terms and categories used to describe different forms of identity and behavior. For example, there were distinctions made between male and female homosexuality, as well as between active and passive partners. There were also different terms used to describe people who dressed or behaved in a way that did not conform to traditional gender roles, such as crossdressers or transgender individuals. These categories were not always clearly defined or universally understood, and there was often ambiguity and fluidity around gender and sexual identity. Ming Sexual Beliefs In addition to the above points, there were also various superstitions and beliefs surrounding sex and sexuality in the Ming Dynasty. For example, it was believed that certain sexual practices or positions could have medicinal or spiritual benefits. There were also taboos around menstruation and childbirth, with women being considered impure during these times. Some of these beliefs were based on traditional Chinese medicine or folk practices, while others were rooted in Confucian or Taoist philosophy. Overall, sex and sexuality in the Ming dynasty were complex and multifaceted, reflecting the social, cultural, and political context of the time. While there were various forms of sexual expression and identity, there were also strict norms and expectations around behavior and morality. Prostitution and concubinage were accepted practices, but were also subject to regulation and stigma. Homosexuality was not illegal, but was not openly celebrated or accepted. Sexual education was available to some, but not to all, and was subject to censorship and cultural norms. Finally, there were various beliefs and superstitions surrounding sex and sexuality reflecting the broader spiritual and philosophical context of the time thanks for watching do like subscribe and comment